Shabbat Shalom. Today is the day of Shavuot. It is a Shabbat. It is a day of Mikra Kodesh, a day of sacred assembly. Today is the second of the three Regalim, the three pilgrim festivals where we are called to come to Jerusalem uh, and to the holy temple that was there. And so these are days of festivity. The three pilgrim feasts, it's Chag, Hamatzah, the festival, La Fiesta. In fact, when you say feast, um, it, it sounds okay, but in, in Hebrew, it's more like a fiesta. You know, now when you think of a fiesta, uh, you think of joy, of rejoicing, of a lot of people eating here and sharing meals. And that, that's what the, 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 the Moedim were fiestas. And these are the three main Chag, uh, H-A-G, which means a fiesta. And it was the fiesta of unleavened bread. It was the fiesta of weeks and the fiesta of Sukkot. So there's three fiestas that we have in Scripture. And so today is one of those fiestas, and we're going to be looking at this. So today, oh, closing the curtains, <laughs> opening the curtains. Today is the 50th day after Yom Chabekurim, when the Omer Reshi was offered to Adonai. And so today is Chag, or La Fiesta de Shavuot, uh, the Feast of Shavuot. Uh, it's also a Moed, and a Moed is an appointed day. This is something that Adonai said. You know, the other day we we're talking about a term that is used by some of you that uh, were Catholics or, or might still be uh, Roman Catholic. We have uh, there the word holy day of obligation. How many of you remember that term, holy day of obligation? I grew up Roman Catholic, and so we had uh, holy days of obligation. Uh, of course, every Sunday was a holy day of obligation, and uh, of course, Christmas and Easter were holy days of obligation, and other days, uh, Feast of Pentecost, which is today, holy day of obligation. And so, this is actually a biblical concept. Although the, some of the days are wrong, like Sunday instead of Sabbath, like uh, you know, Christmas is Easter instead of uh, Sukkot, where you, when Yeshua was born, and... Um, and Pesach, when he died, and Yom Bekurim. These in Scripture, Leviticus 23, are considered, and that's where the concept of Holy Day of Obligation comes in, are considered Holy Days of Obligation. These are days when Adonai says, I want to meet with you. So today, even though we as Mosaic, Messianic, and Apostolic uh, believers do not meet on a Sunday. There are two Sundays in the biblical calendar that we're commanded to meet, and that's the day of the Omer Rashid and Shavuot. On the Omer Rashid, Yeshua rose from the dead. And on the day of Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, the La Fiesta de las Semanas, that's when he sent us his Holy Spirit. So the resurrection and the giving of the baptism of the Holy Spirit are the only two Yom Rishon, first day of the week, or what is called in the Gregorian calendar, Sunday, that we're commanded to meet, to have a Mikra Kodesh, a holy convocation. And of course, today is also uh, 
Sabbath. Today is a day of no work. So today we don't work like we don't work on the Sabbath. Today is also a day of no work. So today is Chag Shavuot. Today is the biblical Feast of Yahweh, the biblical Feast of Yahweh of weeks. And again, as we've taught in the last several weeks, it is also the 50th day, uh, which is where we get the word Pentecost. And so we've been counting. Yesterday was the seventh uh, Shabbat. And the day after the seventh Shabbat, 49 days, today's the 50th day, completes the counting of the weeks. Completes the counting of the weeks. Now, we are going to be talking today about the Ruach HaKodesh Unleashed. We're going to unleash the Ruach HaKodesh. Why, why would, do I always say the word unleashed with Torah unleashed and, you know, Pesach unleashed? And I always want to use that term unleashed. Why, why do I always do that? Because in the last 2,000 years, we have leashed, we have tied up, we have bound the Torah and Tanakh. And many people, in fact, it, it was Marcion that called it the Old Testament. The Torah and the Nevaim, the prophets and the Ketuvim, the rest of the writings that we call the whole Tanakh, are not the Old Testament. That's the Hebrew Bible. If you want to use a term, uh, use the word Hebrew Bible or the word Tanakh, which is an acronym for the Torah, the prophets, and uh, the writings. And so they've been bound up. The, our, our, our feasts, we, we didn't grow up with these, and these are part of what is called the Christian Bible. We didn't grow up with these. We didn't grow up with Passover. We grew up with the Mass and the Lord's Supper and all these things that Yeshua gave us, but throughout the years they were manipulated. They were some of them were hidden. Some some of the aspects of them were taken away. Additions came in. Subtractions and additions came in. And so it is with the Ruach HaKodesh. The word Ruach means the spirit. And HaKodesh is the word the Holy One, the Holy Spirit. Now the term Holy Spirit, contrary to what I've heard people say, I, I've heard people say e even on, on uh, the internet, oh, the word Holy Spirit does not appear in the Tanakh. I, I heard one rabbi say that. The, the Holy term, ho yes it does. And we're going to see that. It is the Holy Spirit. Adonai set apart spirit. And we need to unleash because it's been leashed, it's been bound, it's been kept. But we need to allow the Holy Spirit to have his place and position in the body of Messiah. And we need to allow the Ruach to come and fill us. The term that is used that we're going to see is baptize us, immerse us, as if we were in an immersion with the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we're going to study today. And again, this is going to be the introduction. Today's study is an introduction to a five-part series that we're going to start on understanding the doctrine of the Holy Spirit understanding the doctrine of the Holy Spirit because there's all kinds of confusion about the Holy Spirit, about, you know, who he is or what it is. Again, people call him an it sometimes uh, and, or a force or uh, a person. Is he a person or a, a force? And we're going to go into all these things. We're going to, uh, towards the end, I'll explain it more. But... We really need to start learning about the Holy Spirit. Now, remember, we are a Mosaic congregation, which means that we follow, uh, and I would say the term Torah-based. You know, a lot of people are using the term, I'm Torah-observant. Well, 
first of all, it is impossible to be Torah observant today. Even in Israel, why? First of all, we don't have a temple. We don't have a Kohen Chagadol. We don't have a great Kahuna. We don't have our temple. We don't have a Kohanim. We don't have Leviim. Yeah, they're, they're starting to bring that, but, but there's no authority. There's no Sanhedrin. No authority. There's several Sanhedrins, but they're against each other. We don't have a king. There's no king in Israel. A monarchy is the way of Scripture with a Kohanim, with Leviim. We don't have that. Israel today is really a secular state. Yes, there's religious people there, Orthodox and other types of groups, but there is not one consistent when Messiah comes, everything will be put together when Messiah comes. But for now, we could base ourselves on Torah. And that's why I call ourselves Torah-based. Because there's, especially living in America, there's, there's things that we can't do, that we can't follow, even though we want to. Now, what I've tried to do in this congregation is try to practice as much as we can for practice. These are practices these are rehearsals, like this morning. This morning at 9 o'clock, all the men in our holy temple, 9 o'clock was the time of the morning sacrifice and morning prayer. And at 9 o'clock, that's when the events of Shavuot happened. Well, every regalim, every pilgrim feast, all our men meet here, all the men folk. We do that as practice because Adonai says to do it, and we do it. Now it says, when you come to the place where Adonai gives his name a home, which is only Jerusalem. But we also know that when Yeshua met with the woman at the well, and she says, is it this place or that place? And Yeshua said, the days are coming. And I'm now here. When true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. And that's what Adonai is seeking. Worshippers that will worship in spirit, according to the Ruach, and in truth, according to the actual word of Elohim. Not tradition, not other stories, additions and subtractions, but the truth. And Yeshua is the truth, and the truth is contained in the word. So my vision is to try as best as possible to practice what is written, what can be practiced, but also to rehearse what we can't practice, we could rehearse. And so we want to unleash all these things. So let's uh, get into some of this here this morning. Uh, of course, uh, today uh, is the end of the beginning which started with the Omer Reshit and Leviticus 23.10. Uh, speak to the sons of Israel. Uh, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, Martha, when you enter the land which I am going to give you again, this is a future. Leviticus 23 is still future. It, they didn't do it for 40 years. This is when they enter the land. And you are going to give to you and reap the harvest, then you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruit. This is called the Omer Reshit, the sheaf of the first fruit, which is a hand's breadth of barley. And you will bring that hand's breadth as a first fruit, as a tithe in a sense, uh, of your harvest to the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh, for you to be accepted. On the day after the Sabbath, this is after Passover, the priest shall wave it. It shall be a perpetual statue of Mishpatim Chukim throughout your generations and all your dwelling places. You shall count, you shall count for yourselves 
from the day after the Sabbath, from the day when you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, there shall be seven complete Sabbaths. So if it starts on a Yom Rishon, it ends on a Sabbath, and you shall count seven of those complete Sabbaths. When you brought the sheaf to the wave offering, you shall count seven complete Sabbaths. You shall count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. The seventh Sabbath is 49. The day after the seventh Sabbath is the day 50. Pentecoste. Then you shall present a new grain offering to Yahweh. And so these, like we said uh, on our previous study, this is a continuation uh, of that and an introduction to our teaching on the Holy Spirit. Uh, this starts with Resurrection Day, which is the day of the Omer Rashid, as the priest was offering the Omer Rashid. Um, at that moment, uh, Yeshua was rising to the Father to present himself uh, as the complete sacrifice for sin. And 50 days later, as the priest was lifting up the two loaves, the two loaves, and they were much bigger than these, and the two loaves of leavened bread, as Adonai was offering, as the priest was offering these to Adonai, at that very moment in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1 and following was being read as the Haftarah, the Ruach fell. So Yeshua ascended to the Father, and 50 days later, the Ruach came. And so this is the significance of these two twin feasts, twin uh, times when uh, we come together. Um, now, it's all about the promise of the Father. The Ruach HaKodesh is the promise of the Father. And remember, one of the important concepts that we need to have is the idea that everything from Genesis to Revelation, everything, every history, every uh, statute, every decree, everything given, uh, the coming of Yeshua when he came, the giving of the Ruach, everything was at Adonai's set time. Adonai does not have plan A. Oops, plan A, we missed it. So that's the Old Testament. Let's go to plan B, the New Testament. No, there's, there's nothing like that. Adonai had everything ready. So the promise of the Father is the Ruach at the appointed time, at the Moed, which was Shavuot. And so let's do a little history here for those of you that haven't uh, uh, received this yet. Uh, the Ruach. The Ruach is always seen as a dove. And here's the word, Ruach HaKodesh. Ruach HaKodesh. And the Ruach HaKodesh is the Holy Spirit, always seen as a dove. And so even from the beginning, the history, you know, one thing, again, this is a concept that needs to be put in our minds. The Holy Spirit pre-existed creation. Of course, we know that the Father pre-existed creation. That's easy one. Everybody believes that. Some people, we believe that Yeshua pre-existed creation. Remember, not all Messianics and not all Christians believe that. Definitely Judaism doesn't believe that. But we believe that Yeshua, as the word of Elohim, pre-existed creation. And we believe that the Holy Spirit pre-existed creation also. And we see both the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Word, and the Holy Spirit, we see them at creation. So if all three of them, the Father, the Word, 
and the Holy Spirit were at creation, then they pre-existed creation. That's simple. That's not hard to understand. And so, the Ruach HaElohim, let's go to Breshit uh, 1-2, or Genesis 1-2. And there, in the Hebrew, it says, Varuach Elohim, and the Spirit, Ruach, Elohim, the, the Spirit of Elohim, Merachefet, That's, and that uh, third word there is the word, Merachefet al panai Chamaim, and the Ruach, Elohim, the word Merachefet, uh, in King James and some other Bibles, use the word to hover, to hover. Uh, other people is above. And it's the word, yes, hover, but it's the word of a hen, of a dove, of an eagle, as they hover over the nest, as the little eggs are uh, being warmed by uh, the, the mother, the, the hen, uh, the eagle, uh, and they go get food for themselves, and, and uh, they come and they hover over, and they warm, they incubate uh, these little eggs. In a sense, it says, and the spirit of Elohim hovered, upon the face of the waters. As Adonai created this glob that we're going to call later on the earth. And it was water, and it was mud, and it was tohu vavohu, formless and void. And the Ruach Elohim merachefet hovered, which means the Ruach was part of that creation, was part of that work. When it says Elohim, Breshit para Elohim et hashemayim va'et ha'aretz. In the beginning, Elohim, he created the heavens and the earth. As Elohim, and remember, Elohim there is plural, not singular. Not God created, but in Hebrew, Elohim is plural. But he created singularly. And the Ruach was there. And then... Elohim and Elohim spoke. Words came out. The word Yehior be light. By Yehior, and there was light. So there in the second, you know, first three verses of scripture, we have the Father in plurality creating the heavens and the earth. We see the Ruach hovering, and we see when Elohim speaks. He speaks Chadavad, the word. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. In Hebrew, it's Breshit Chaya Chadavad. In the beginning was the word. And of course, Chadavad was with Elohim. And Chadavad was Elohim. And so we see triadically, triadically, I call this a triadic verse, we see triadically Elohim, the Elohut, Ha Elohut creating in the Ruach there. See, the Ruach didn't come at Pentecost. The Ruach has always been here and was part of pre-existence in the Elohut. Watch what David says in Psalms 51, 11. Do not cast me away from thy presence, and do not take thy Ruach HaKodesh from me. What do you mean the word Holy Spirit isn't in Tenach? Do not take thy Ruach HaKodesh, thy Holy Spirit, from me. Isaiah 63.10. But they rebelled and grieved his Ruach HaKodesh. Therefore he turned himself to become their enemy. He fought against them. Isaiah 63.11. Then his people remembered the days of old, of Moses, where he who brought them up out of the sea 
with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit in the midst of them? So yes, the Holy Spirit is not only at creation, but he is throughout Scripture. Sometimes it uses Ruach HaKodesh, sometimes it uses his Ruach, or it uses Ruach Elohim, or it uses Ruach Yahweh, the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of Elohim. We find these terms throughout Tenach. Isaiah 63, 9 to 4. Uh, the, the one that we read, here's the whole thing. And we just took snips of this one. Uh, but here's the whole thing if you want to look at the whole thing. Uh, Ezekiel 36. Now, this is a very important scripture. This is the promise of the Father. Here's where the Father promises. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Think of it. Water and spirit always kind of are pal- parallel with each other. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart. He's going to renew the heart. You know, he doesn't take our old heart and give us a new heart. He renews us. Every one of us is a new creation. How many of you are new creations here? But, you know, when, you know, I was still as funny looking after I became a new creation as I was before. Nothing changed. But on the inside, something changed. I was renewed. I was made new. I am a new creature. I'm a renewed creature in Yeshua. He's going to put a new heart and a new ruach in you. And I will remove, in other words, circumcise the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my ruach within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, my mishpatim, and careful to observe my hukim. So look at that. The promise of the Father is that Adonai wants to cleanse us, and of course that cleansing comes from the blood of Yeshua and the Ruach HaKodesh, which is also looked upon as water, as we're going to see. And I will cleanse you. He, he, you know, we become filthy. We're talking about Isra here who was clean, but then because of idolatry, because of adulteries, and because of thievery and sacrifices to idols and all this stuff, they became filthy. We've become filthy because of all these things. But Adonai wants to renew, renew. This actually really happened. This verse happened to Israel on Shavuot, the day of Pentecost, when the Ruach came in and the first fruits of Israel, these 11 disciples, it was 11 disciples that received the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they were the first fruits. And from there, the harvest has been growing and growing and has included us today and our descendants as they receive Yeshua and his Ruach. But look at that. I will put my Ruach within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. It's the Ruach inside of us that causes us to walk in his statutes. In other words, if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. If we walk in the Spirit, we will be emptied of the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit will be part of us. You know, fruit and work are two different things. Fruit is something that comes out naturally. If you have an apple tree, you're going to have apples. They just come out in spring. They'll start coming up. They'll bud and then all of a sudden you have a nice apple. The works of the flesh, think of it, the works of the, you have to work. You have to do something. Work is something that you apply. 
apply energy. You apply energy to the works of the flesh, which are fornication and decency, angers and, uh, you know, cliques and all this type of stuff. And they're in Galatians 5. But you have to work to do that. But walking in the Spirit, if you walk in the Spirit, then fruit will automatically come from you. Because He will cause you to walk in His Mishpatim and Chukim. Which means that, you know, the Mishpatim, Chukim, the, the mitzvot, the commandments, all these, you know, say Sabbath. Well, it's hard for me to keep Sabbath. Of course it is in the flesh. But you walk in the Spirit, the Spirit within you wants to cause you to walk observing the Sabbath, observing the Moedim, observing uh, clean and unclean, observing all these things that Adonai wants us to be careful. Not legalistic to observe, but careful to observe. Now, in the New Covenant Scriptures, the Apostolic Writings. I baptize you with water, Yohanan says, for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. So Yeshua is the immerser of the Ruach. Yeshua is the baptizer, if you will, of the Ruach. And as Yeshua ascended, he could not baptize with the Holy Spirit until he was glorified. But once he was glorified, 10 days later, Yeshua baptized the assembly of the 11 apostles um, with the Ruach. Again, Mark, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Luke, Yohanan answered and said to them, As for me, I baptize with water, I immerse with water. But one is coming who is mightier than I. I am not fit to untie the thong of his sandal. He will immerse you with the Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John answered, them saying, I baptize you in water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. It is he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. This is he. This is he. On behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man, a man, who is higher rank than I. For he existed before me. Whoa, stop, stop, stop. Let's get under the hood of that one. Look at that. After me comes a man, a man, unsaid, a human, who ranks higher than I. Yochanan was just a man, just a prophet, just a Kohen. Remember, he was the son of a Kohen. He was just that. The rank of the one that comes after him is higher, and he holds the rank of the word of Elohim. The messenger of Yahweh holds the rank of the Son, holds the rank of Messiah, holds the rank of Sovereign, because he existed before me. Oh, wait a second. This man isn't just a man. This man is greater than a man. Because no man exists before a man if he was born after that man. Only someone who existed before someone who was born before him could be this one, and it's Yeshua. And his preexistence means that he has an equality with the one who sent them. Because anyone who existed before pre-existence is part of the Elohut, as we're going to see later on. And I did not recognize him, but the one, but in order that he be manifested or revealed to Israel, I came baptized in water. 
And Yohanan bore witness, saying, I have beheld the Ruach descending as a dove. Merachefet, he was Merachefet again as in creation as with Yeshua. Descending as a dove out of heaven. And he remained upon him, hovering over him. And I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, He upon whom you see the Ruach descending and remaining upon him, hovering, this is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit, and I have seen and I have borne witness that this is the son of Elohim. Yohanan claims Yeshua is the son of Elohim. He existed before me. Yohanan was born six months before Yeshua, but Yeshua existed before him because he had pre-existence before creation. And he's the Holy Spirit baptizer. He's the one that is going to give the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. Alos, another advocate like myself. Yeshua is the advocate. And he will give another advocate like myself, Yeshua says, to help you, to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Woo. That happened on today, Shavuot. That's what we're, this is the anniversary of Shavuot of when the Ruach came. The spirit of truth. But the advocate, the parakletos, the word Advocate is the Greek word parakletos. Para means alongside. Kletos to call. The one you call alongside. When, if you have to go to, before a judge, you call, you ring that bell. You ring that bell. And you call the lawyer. And the lawyer will go and stand before you. He will be your paracletos. Every, lo every lawyer is a paracletos. You call him alongside. Well, the Holy Spirit is your advocate. He prays for you many times in words that cannot even be uttered when you cannot pray, we are told. Whom the Father will send in my name, in my authority will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. That's why when people say, is what they call the New Testament, the apostolic writings, is this reliable? Well, it is. Why? Because the Holy Spirit reminded them. You know, the scriptures were written years after, years after the events. But who was there teaching them and reminding them? Who taught Paul? Paul didn't have face-to-face -face knowledge of Yeshua in this life. Who taught him? The Ruach HaKodesh, along with Yeshua. When the Helper comes, whom I will send from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father. Look at that. The Ruach proceeds from the Father. He will bear witness of me. So the Ruach bears witness of Yeshua. Yeshua bears witness of the Father. The Father sent Yeshua. The Ruach proceeds from the Father, and Yeshua sends the Ruach. So we see that triadically. We see that in together in unity. But when he... The, Ruh, the spirit of truth, Ruach Hayem, it comes. He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine and shall disclose it to you. And so that's why when we think of the word, the Scriptures are Elohim breathed. 
All scripture is inspired by Elohim. The word inspired there is Elohim breathed by the breath of Elohim, which is the Ruach. So the Holy, the scriptures were given by the Holy Spirit. And again, Paul in Timothy there is talking about the Torah, the scriptures, the Torah, the Tanakh. But over here we see something else. We see here a hint of what we are going to call the apostolic writings or the English Bible is called the New Testament. So of what is the Father's, the Ruach HaKodesh will take from what is Yeshua, the word, because remember, Yeshua is the word of Elohim, and hand it to you guys, the apostles and disciples of Yeshua. Now at the last day, the great day of La Fiesta, uh, and uh, this is La Fiesta of Sukkot, this is Shemini Asadet, the last day, Yeshua stood and cried out, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Come to who? To me. If you're really thirsty. Now, we're, this was the time when the water in Israel was at the lowest. The Gihon Spring was just a trickle. And the cisterns had gotten so low. And everybody was physically thirsty. But there is a thirst that has nothing to do with water. There is a hunger that has nothing to do with food. And that's a spiritual thirst. That's a spiritual hunger, which every one of us needs to have. We need to be hungry for the true word. You know, we, we, the reason we're not hungry for the true word is we're filled with junk food. You know, if you give someone all to eat, if you get a, 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 a child and all you feed him is candy and chips and all this stuff and then say, hey, we have a, a good uh, roast over here or we have a good uh, broccoli or whatever. Oh, I'm too full. I, I, I don't need that. They don't need the good food because they're filled with junk food or well, we're, we're filled with the junk food of religion we're filled with the junk food of tradition and because of that we're not hungry for the true word we're not hungry for the ruach kodesh and we need to get rid of the junk food and tradition and the teachings of men in order for us to say i need his Ruach. He who believes in me, as Scripture said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. The word his there, from his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. Now most people translate the recipient, from the recipient who gets water, rivers of living water shall flow. But that's not the grammar. From his innermost being, we're talking about he who believes in me, in me, Yeshua, from his innermost being, because remember, it has to be not first person now, but it is third person because of the scripture that we're going to look at next. This he spoke of the Ruach, whom those who believed in him were to receive, were to receive in the future. And Shavuot, for the spirit was not yet given because Yeshua had not been glorified. Yeshua was glorified 10 days ago. 10 days ago we did Ascension Day service here. We had a service for Ascension Day. When Yeshua ascended to the Father for the last time and went to the Father and sat at the right hand of majesty and now he intercedes for us and he's glorified. He Yeshua now has the same glory 
that he had with the Father and the Ruach before the creation of the world. That's what John 17, chapter 17 says. Yeshua says, now Father, in that high priestly prayer, Father, glorify me with the same glory we had before the world was. So Yeshua, again, his preexistence, and when Yeshua came down, as it says in Philippians 2, 5 and following, let this mind be in you, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Yeshua, the Messiah. Though he existed in the form of Elohim, he existed as the Elohut, he did not think it robbery to be equal with Elohim, but he, had, he emptied himself and took the condition of a slave, of a human. And being in that condition, he was humbler yet even to accepting death, death on the cross. Therefore, Elohim highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every other name, that in the name Yeshua, all knees shall bow, all tongues confess, that he is sovereign to the glory of the Father. And that's what happened here. Yeshua, after 10 days after his ascension and glorification, he sent his Ruach today. Remember water from the rock? Adonai uh, tells Moses, get your rod and strike the rock. Get your rod and strike the rock. And as he did, what happened? From the belly of the rock came out rivers of living water. Rivers of living water came out from the rock. And what was that living water? The Ruach HaKodesh. The Holy Spirit was the living water. Yeshua was the rock. Yeshua was the rock. Remember it says the rock followed them. (laughs) Yeshua was that rock. And from his belly, from the belly of the rock, shall flow rivers of living water. Mein Chaim, Mein Chaim, rivers of living water. The Ruach is the living water, which those who were to follow him were to receive, but they couldn't yet until Yeshua was glorified. Once Yeshua was glorified, Mein Chaim came 10 days later which is Shavuot, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Connecting the dots, seeing these parallels show us the glory and the wisdom, the understanding that Adonai has that he wants us to have also. Of course, not many days from now, John baptized with water. But you are going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That was 10 days later. Of course, when the days of Pentecost came, uh, they had all met together when suddenly there came from heaven a sound as of a powerful wind which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire. And they were separated and came to rest. Again, hover. These tongues of fire, what look like tongues of fire, what Ezekiel says were torches of fire, hovered over the head of each of them. And it was the eleven, only the eleven. Not men, women, and children, not everybody, but only eleven men. Because only eleven men of the believers, of course, other men that were disciples were on Temple Mount, uh, but the eleven received. Uh, there was no women in the Temple Mount. That was Men's Day, remember. Uh, it was the Regalim. Uh, Mary wasn't there. Mary Magdalene wasn't there. Uh, it was only the 11 disciples, and uh, 11 apostles, and the other disciples that were with them. Matthias was, I'm sure, there uh, and because he had to be there uh, in order for him to become the next apostle uh, after they chose him. Peter's sermon on Pentecost Day, on the 50th day. Uh, One of the things that I wanted to do, which we'll do, is I actually want to do a teaching 
on Acts chapter 2. So next week, we will start with our understanding the Holy Spirit, and we'll do a teaching on Acts chapter 2 because we really need to see this uh, every verse, verse by verse of Acts chapter 2. We will go over uh, that. Um, Of course, the Holy Spirit, watch this. The Holy Spirit fell on the day of first fruits. Today is first fruits. We give our first fruits of the wheat harvest today. And that's why these two loaves of bread, these are first fruits. These are the bekurim of the wheat harvest. But the Holy Spirit is the first fruit and has both anointed us. Oh, how many love that anointed? anointed song today the anointed song of the anointing (laughs) and that's a beautiful song of the anointing Um, he has anointed in other words he has poured poured not just a little dot of oil but he has poured the oil of his ruach and marked us with his seal giving us as pledge the spirit in our hearts a pledge, you know, like when you buy a house, you put earnest money. You put earnest money. That earnest money is a pledge. It's a pledge that says, I'm going to give you a thousand, ten thousand, whatever uh, the percentage is for the cost of the house. I'm going to give you this earnest, this, this pledge, so that I could give you the rest and I pledge to pay you. The rest. What happens if you default? <laughs> you lose that money. That money's gone. The pledge of the Spirit. It is Elohim who designed us for this very purpose. Can you imagine? You've been designed for this purpose. He's designed you. Can you imagine? And He's still probably designing us. Sometimes, you know, we do that extra thing. He has to cut this off and, you know, at this, who designed us for this very purpose, he has given us as the Spirit, the, he's given us the Ruach as a pledge. Now you too in him have heard the message, talking about the Ephesians, to the Gentiles, these, these people who used to be pagans, he says. Now you too in him have heard the message of the truth and the gospel of your salvation. And having put your trust in it, you have been stamped with the seal of the Ruach HaKodesh of the promise. The promise of the Father. Who is the pledge of our inheritance for the freedom of the people whom Elohim has taken for his own. For the praise of his glory. Look at that. You've put your trust in him. And you've been stamped. With the seal of the Holy Spirit. You know, seals were very important in the ancient world. We're going to look at this. Seals were very, very important. In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believed you were sealed with the spirit of promise. Here's the seal. And any document, and here's uh, the template, and they would put the wax, and then with this little template, they. And if this was broken, if this was found broken, then whoever broke it was liable of the death penalty. Remember, Yeshua's tomb was sealed. To seal just doesn't mean to close it off and you know put some kind of seal on. No, it meant to put one of these. They put a ribbon, and on the ribbon. They would put on both sides um, wax with the stamp of the governor. And if that was broken, then you were liable for death. By the way, Yeshua broke it. (laughs) Yeshua broke it. And the tomb was opened and the stone was rolled away. Well, this is what the Holy Spirit has done. The gospel of our salvation But when the kindness and the love of Elohim our Savior, Elohim our Savior. Of course, in in King James talk, 
King James speak, this is uh, God our Savior. And we're talking about the Father here. Towards men appeared, not by works of righteousness that we have done. Always remember that. There's no work of righteousness that we could do that could earn our salvation. Contrary to what a lot of people say, Messianic believers, we are not saved by keeping Sabbath. We are not saved by anything that we would do. Anything that Torah tells us does not save. In fact, what Torah tells us and we don't do condemns us. That's why we need Yeshua. We need Yeshua because the Torah condemns us because we've broken it. But just because your payment has been paid, that doesn't mean that the Torah is done away with. Can you imagine if someone gets a ticket for running a red light? And then someone pays it for you. Does that mean you could run red lights again? No. Does that mean that as soon as that payment was paid for you running the red light, the ticket, that all of a sudden automatically there's no law that says no more red lights? No. That, that law is still there. You still got to do it. But now you've been freed from the penalty. Your penalty has been paid by someone else. So therefore now we're going to be a little more careful about not running red lights, right? Or speeding. Where is she? Um, towards man's ap uh, appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. It's a done deal. Through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. The moment that we are baptized, then the Ruach comes, like it says there in Acts 2, 38. You must repent, Teshuvah, Metanoia, and every one of you must be immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is regeneration. And that's when you are actually born again. That's when, when the, the spiritual uh, battery cables are put on you and, bzzz, and you are alive again. And it's the Ruach that does that. And the renewing of the Ruach, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior. Look at that. Elohim, our Savior. Talking about the Father. Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior. You can't have two saviors. You can only have one Savior. But what did Yeshua say? I and the Father are Echad. And all three are Echad. So, by the way, this is a triadic salvation process. Triadic salvation process. It is the Father. The love of the kindness and love of the Father. It is the regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Through Yeshua the Messiah, you've been justified. Yeshua justifies you. The Holy Spirit regenerates you. By the way, the Holy Spirit regenerates you, renews you, and sanctifies you. Yeshua justifies you, saves you by His grace. We should become heirs according to to the hope of everlasting life, triadically. This is why we really need to understand who Elohim is. Most Jews and Christians and every other religion does not understand Adonai. But we need to make a concerted effort to in our little minds, my little mind. Can you imagine in our little minds the greatness, the, the words can't even speak of, of his eternity, his, you know, limitless. But we could try. We could try to understand. In fact, 
this next week we're going to start with understanding the doctrine of the Ruach HaKodesh part one. This will be for next week. We'll start what part one today. Um, we started with this and uh, we're going to start looking at first of all who is Elohim? Have you ever pondered since you were probably a child, who, when people said about God, uh, all these words, Lord, you know, today we use the, the actual Hebrew terms, Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh. We probably knew the term Jehovah because of the Jehovah's Witnesses, things like that. All these terms, and you try, you know, theologians have tried to figure them out, and we try to figure out, and we are this small, but in eternity, who, who is the creator? Who is the one who is light? Elohim is light. Elohim is love. We have all these attributes of Elohim. And the name that is the, again, no words can say uh, but the Hebrew word uh, is Ha Elohut. Everybody say with me, Ha Elohut. Most people have not heard this word before. Ha Elohut. Ha Elohut. The word Elohut. If we were to use King James speak, we would probably use the word Godness. Godness. You know, like humanness. We know what humanness is, right? We know what, we know what dogness is, the attributes of dogs. We know what catness is. We know that word ness at the end of a word kind of says the attributes, the substance, the nature of them. Well, the problem with using, again, King James speak is that, in fact, in theology, we learn about the nature of God, the nature of God. Well, wait a second. Elohim is above nature. He created nature. Nature's a creature, so he doesn't have any kind of terrestrial nature. He does have a, and that's what Ha Elohut is. Ha Elohut is the word, again, translated by different words, uh, theos in Greek, Latin, uh, uh, divine, the word divine, the word theos, Dios, God, Gott in German. All these words are used to translate Chaelochut. In fact, the word Chaelochut in King James is also translated some places as the Godhead. How many have ever heard that term, the Godhead? That's a Awful translation for what the original um, English said. It didn't use the word head. It used the word godhood, like manhood. Did you know that manhood and womanhood are different? Inside and out were different. Our bones, did you know the bones of, a, of uh, manhood bones and womanhood bones are different? Everything is different, inside out. Even our, 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 our souls, our thinking, our minds, um, all that is different. Well, Elohut, Ha Elohut means Godhood. And from there, somebody translated into Godhead, and that's not a good word, but that's who Ha Elohut is. And next week, we're going to start looking at this also. But I have a problem because most of my Jewish friends and most of my Messianic friends do not believe what Scripture teaches. And I'm going to put another symbol here that I know I'm going to get a lot of letters or messages saying, oh man, that's heresy. That's Roman Catholicism. You're, you're being a Roman Catholic Trinitarian. But... 
I really believe that the Elohut, if we studied it, and especially since we're going to be saying the Holy Spirit, because we need to know who is the Father, who is the Word, and who is the Ruach. And of course, we need to look at this as the Father. We have Ha Elohut in the middle, the Elohut. And then we have El Elyon, the Father, Elohim Most High. El Elyon means Elohim Most High. The Father is the Most High. And then we have Chadabar, the Word. And the Word became the Son. And then we have the Ruach, the Spirit. Now we need to know that the Father is, has Ha Elohutness. The Son has Ha Elohutness. The Holy Spirit has Ha Elohutness. There is, and again with King James speak, the Word, the Son, the Word that became the Son is Elohut. So is the Ruach. So is the Father. But remember, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Ruach, and the Ruach is not the Father. The Father, the Son, and the Ruach as El Elyon, Chadavar, and Ruach, they're not each other, but they are echad. They are echad in the Elohut. And it's in the Elohut that they're echad. Now, someone told me, you know, there's too much. It, all this is far above us. I, I want to go to a congregation that, that uh, they just teach, you know, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You know, we, I don't want to give you kindergarten stuff where everybody says, amen, amen, amen. Now, this might sound heavy stuff, but it's not. This is stuff that we should have known from the beginning. There's only one Elohut. One, an Elohim is means the mighty ones, and Adonai means the sovereign ones. Of course, the name of the Elohut is Yahweh. And uh, we need to learn this. And in closing, we're going to start looking at the deity and humanity of Yeshua the Messiah, the deity and baptism of the Ruach HaKodesh. Of course, the Elohut is Yahweh, and the two titles are Elohim and Adonai. We're going to look at the deity of Yeshua the Messiah and the deity of the Ruach HaKodesh, the humanity of Yeshua and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These are things that we really, really need to grasp. So students, Talmidim, uh, buckle up, and next week we will start on some of this. And so today is a day of harvest, a day of rejoicing, when we offer to Adonai uh, his blessings. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. This is cheesecake. What is cheesecake doing on Shavuot? Well, there's some of you out there that cheesecake, Shavuot is about cheesecake. But... <laughs> Shavuot is actually about blessing. So let's stand before Adonai. Baruch atah Adonai lochenu melech haolam. Hamotzi lechem mincha aretz. Blessed are you, Adonai, king of the universe. You have given us bread from the earth. And we thank you for the blessing, for the food those that brought food and, and those that brought uh, all kinds of goodies and, and um, uh, meats and dairy. Uh, we're going to have a lot of meat and dairy today. Uh, Shabbat shalom. shalom. Have a good day. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to Olive Tree Fellowship and Torah Unleashed Ministries. Thank you for joining us on our channel. If you have enjoyed this teaching and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can be notified 
when we have new videos. If you would like to support Olive Tree Fellowship and Toda Unleashed Ministries, please visit us at olivetreefellowship.com or todaunleashed.org. We thank you for your past support and hope to continue with you. Shalom, shalom. Have a good day. Shalom, shalom y bienvenidos a Olive Tree y a la Torah Desatada. Les doy gracias a ustedes y a Adonai por su apoyo que nos han dado aquí. Y si quieren continuar a hacer una donación, pueden ir a, aquí en TorahUnleashed.org o en olivetreefellowship.com.com y ahí pueden dar una donación. Su apoyo, su ayuda es importante en estos días. Shalom, shalom.